is coming here on Thursday and amongst many of the controversial issues surrounding the official visit is the Catholic Church's ruling that priests should be celibate. Now, Pope Benedict is a firm believer in this, but for some of Britain's Catholics, this is an increasingly outdated concept, and there are calls to allow priests to marry. Joining me now, Father Paul King. Uh, he's from the Catholic Voices Speakers Group. Good morning to you, Father. Good morning. And we have got the Times Religion Correspondent, and that is Ruth Gledhill. Ruth, good to see you. Uh, Father, for or against, or are you... Does the Pope tell you what to think on this? Well, I've been a celibate now for eight years, and they've been eight very happy years. So I think that celibacy as a normal part of being a Catholic priest is a good thing. It first enables me to be entirely available. It gives me all my time to my work and to the people I serve. If I was married, my first duty, my first love, should be and would have to be to be my wife and if we were blessed to my children. But there's also a deeper reason for celibacy besides being practical in my work. But also, we marry because we are attracted to someone, because we fall in love with them, because we want them to complete us, we want to complete them. The priest says, I'm not, I'm going to embrace a certain loneliness in a way. I'm not going to remain not completed that way. I'm going to allow God to be the one who completes me. So in my ministry, I'm entirely focused upon him. I put myself aside to be entirely about his work and to be as well as I can to be with him in my ministry. And I presume you're not the only religion, the Catholic religion is not the only religion in the world to, to do that. I mean, that would be a sort of... Me, there, are many, there are many women and men, even not of faith, who see much worth in celibacy. Yes. You know, often we can be out there, can't we, in the market almost selling ourselves and many women and men have found actually standing back and having a time of celibacy has allowed themselves to mm -hmm. appreciate themselves more. Okay, well let's get Ruth Glendhill in on all of this. What are you smiling about? Do you find <laughs> you're not against celibacy, you're just against it being compulsory. That's right, uh, and in fact not all Catholic priests have to be celibate because many Anglicans are converting and taking their wives over with them and in fact... What, do they take their... and, and, and they're allowed sexual relations with their wives? Um, well... Can they not just stay married and be celibate? I'm sure Like that many I... marriages outside <laughs> the priesthood. <laughs> um, one thing Father Paul said about Catholic priests having to put God first, therefore they don't have room for family, I, I would slightly dispute that because I am the vicar's daughter. Are you? My father's a priest and I know from experience that um, God can be a competitor in a marriage between a man and a wife, but nevertheless a good Anglican priest is capable of putting both God and his family first in the price that it is over. In fact, by putting but God see, first it enables you sometimes to be a better husband. But you see, a lot of Catholics, and I speak as one, and Miss Jacqueline might speak as one as well, and uh, you see, I would see, I would identify what, uh, with what Father Keener said there, and I think the celibacy thing gives him a spirituality that a Protestant minister doesn't have. Oh, but you see, my father was an Anglo-Catholic priest, and um, he had a very intense and deep spirituality. So again, it all depends upon the individual. Celibacy is a great gift, and it would be a terrible shame yes. if it ceased to exist. Can but I, it's mandatory celibacy that is the that problem. That is the problem. Yes. Uh, would you be in any way, could you see room for that, that, um, that it's an option for a priest? Well, Eamon, as you know, celibacy is a discipline, so the church doesn't understand celibacy as being absolutely essential to Catholic priesthood. But it's been a practice now since the beginning of the church. Sometimes people say it only began in the 11th century and it was all about... Well, it, it, it may be a practice, but Father, also people would see it as a problem um, as well. And are, are we mixing up two things here? Because a lot of people would say that celibacy is to do with all uh, that, that paedophilia problem. Are there two problems here, celibacy and paedophilia. Are we mixing these, these two we, things up? Absolutely. We, we, know, we know there's no connection. In fact, we know when we stand calmly back and look at the, the awfulness of priests having abused the vulnerable, when we stand back from that and actually look at the statistics, you see that uh, Catholic priests are statistically less likely to um, hurt a child or a vulnerable person than, for example, a married man. We know that, sadly, most abuse happens in the family home. So the two quite separate issues. I think where celibacy can become problematic for the individual is when 
he hasn't grown in how he lives celibacy. I mean, for me, what's really important is a good prayer life, so I remain anchored in God. I can't do this on my own. But also the importance of family and friends. I receive an appropriate intimacy from them. Okay, look, I'm sure lots of people want to talk, and Jacqueline's here this morning. She's been getting so many emails on this, no. um, so so you can both chip in. And we sort of don't agree on this too, because I used to have a, my favourite favourite priest. He didn't agree with celibacy, so I don't see any reason why priests can't get married. I think he was celibate, you know, but that's what he thought. Anyway, uh, Daniel, uh, celibacy is such an outdated concept. It's not healthy. How can they give guidance when they have no experience of relationships? Uh, Jim Galloway, celibacy in priests is more historical than religious. It was all about keeping money in the church and not obviously sharing it with the family. Um, Terry Evans, I think it must be difficult for them. It's not natural. I'm sure it impacts on their ability to minister. And Rebecca McGrath, um, who's a Villa fan, who's very sad this morning, has written in saying, we have a married priest in our parish with two kids uh, and a wife. He used to be C of E. Somebody else tweeted and said, this disciples weren't celibate and Peter was obviously the first pope and he would not have been celibate. And Dave Kelly, maybe they should have their own TV show I'm a celibacy priest to get me out of here. Okay, let's get rid of you. One of the terrible tragedies is the thousands and thousands of Catholic priests who've been laicized because they left to marry. And it, it's such a their, their loss to the ministry is such a huge loss to the church. And these are priests who have both vocations, to be priests and to be yeah, but that's married. like saying you join a golf club and it says no jeans, and they say, but we want to wear jeans. But you know the rules. Those, those are the rules. And, and they're the Pope's rules and the Vatican Council's rules, not their rules. But wearing jeans is not um, a fundamental human need or drive, as arguably marriage and having children is for many people. And one of the tragedies is a lot of people, especially um, in previous generations when uh, priests had a vocation at a very young age, they, yes. they experience, they fall in love when they're much older, but and I then think, they have this terrible I think what Father, Father Keane's saying is that you're not like other men, and that's why you do the job you well, do. I am like other men, I hope, <laughs> but I've made a conscious choice, and I've made that choice over a number of years. And it takes six years to train to be a priest. Mm -hmm. After four years, I took a year out because I wanted to focus upon thinking about this issue, and I asked, could I spend time in a parish? Because, of course, men must embrace this yeah. happily. Father, at the end of the day, people want, when the Pope comes here this week, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, Ruth, they want him to be very contrite, they want him to be very sorry, and they want him to apologise over this whole issue of child abuse. What do you think he will do? What do you think will happen? And what needs well, to be Well, first, done? the Pope has done many times now. The letter he wrote to Ireland earlier in the year yeah. was very contrite. Also, he's met victims in Malta, in Australia, and in America. And in all of those visits, he has pointedly do, and do, do you expect from the heart to do the same It is possible that he may meet um, victims at the end of his visit. We've been very fortunate in England and Wales that we've had excellent child protection policy um, from early on. Mm -hmm. So in fact, thank God, we've had few cases and but only recently it said in the newspaper the church be held up as an example of good practice in this Ruth. country. Yes, I think I wrote that very passage. And that is the case in England and Wales and Scotland. The problem was dealt with long before other parts of the world. And so the Pope, um, this visit should be a good visit. Um, he should be welcomed here. And the Catholics here deserve a good visit. And they shouldn't have to pay the price for um, crimes coming to light in other parts of the world at the moment. Do they also deserve an apology, though? The victims deserve an apology, yes. And I'll be surprised if no mention is made of it during the visit. Folks, thank you very much indeed. That will get people talking this morning. Thank you very much for your thoughts and thank you for those emails. Special programmes here on Sky News about the Pope's visit uh, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, there's one. And that will be followed by four days of full live coverage of the Pontiff's tour uh, of the UK. After the break, we've got your sport. Give us a taste of that, Jackie. Yeah, we've got action from...